Now let's look at evaluating some different indefinite integral problems. We're going to be applying the different properties and those basic forms that we just established. So the indefinite integral of 5 dx, so we're integrating just a constant by itself, is going to become 5x plus c. So if we took the derivative of that, we would get 5 plus 0. So again, we could ta always take the derivative of, of our indefinite integral, arrive back at that original function to verify we've got the right answer. In example 5, we have the integral of 22x dx. So taking advantage of those properties that we established, we can rewrite this as 22 times the integral of x dx. So again, we're pulling that constant multiple out, just setting it aside. And we just need to focus on integrating x. So this is x to the first power, so it's going to become x squared. So we increase that exponent by 1 divide by that exact same value and add that constant c and then we just look at anything that might reduce or simplify. In this case 22 divided by 2 is going to become 11x squared plus that constant c. Exactly the same idea works in example 6 even though we have a negative exponent. We can rewrite this as 2 times the integral of x to the negative 11 dx so 2 is a constant multiple that we can just set aside, not worry about until we get to the end of the problem. So we're integrating x to the negative 11th, which will become x to the, whatever that exponent is, we increase it by 1. So x to the negative 10th, and then we divide by that exact same value, plus that constant c, and then we just look at anything that might reduce. So in this case, 2 over 10, will reduce to 1 fifth, so we get negative x to the negative tenth over 5 plus some constant c. To evaluate the integral of 15x to the 1 half, we again use that same idea. 15 is just a constant multiple, so all we need to look at integrating is x to the 1 half. So that will become x to the 3 halves if we increase that by 1 and divide by the exact same value plus that constant c. Then we just look at 15 divided by 3 halves. We'll end up becoming 10x to the 3 halves plus some constant c. In example 8, we've got the integral of 2 over x dx which keep in mind this could also be written as the integral of 2x to the negative first dx. So anytime that x is in the denominator or we have x raised to the negative first power, we need to make sure we catch that that's going to be a natural log derivative. So this is going to be 2 times the integral of 1 over x would be natural log absolute value of x plus some constant c. So we get 2 times natural log, again keep in mind we put that abs those absolute value bars around the x, plus that constant c. To integrate 18 e to the u du, 18 is again just a constant multiple, so all we have to look at integrating is just e to the u, and that integral is e to the u, and then we tack on that constant plus c. So our result is 18e to the u plus c. In our last three examples here, before we can integrate, we need to look at reworking the problem a little bit. So here we have the integral of 3 over root x. So the first thing to catch on to is that we could rewrite this as 3 times x to the negative 1 half. So keep in mind if that was x to the negative 1, our antiderivative would be a natural log, but this isn't negative 1. So our integral is going to become 3 times x to the 1 half, so increasing that exponent by 1, dividing by the exact same value, 
will give us 6x to the 1 half plus c, or if we wanted to rewrite it as a radical, 6 times the square root of x plus c. In example 11, the first thing that we need to do is break this problem up as the sum of two fractions. So we could break it up as 7 over u plus u over u. So we have the sum of two fractions with common denominators. So if we added those back together, we would get to this original expression. And now we can integrate term by term. So the integral of 7 over u will be 7 times the natural log of the absolute value of u. The integral of u over u is really just the integral of 1. So this is going to become 1x, or just x, plus some constant c. Or, I'm sorry, not u, not x, it should be a u there. So 7 natural log of absolute value of u, plus u, and again, plus some constant c. So in example 10, we brought something in the den denominator up to the numerator, so that then we could integrate. In example 11, we took this fraction, split it up as the sum of two fractions. Now in example 12, what we're going to do is distribute through this expression to rewrite this as 3x cubed plus 27x squared, or I'm sorry, just 27x. So by first distributing, now we have something that we can integrate term by term. So this will become 3 times x to the fourth over 4. plus 27 times x squared over 2, plus that constant c. We don't get anything that reduces or simplifies here, but we could just rewrite this as 3 fourths x to the fourth, plus 27 halves, x squared, plus some constant c.